Hi YouTubers. Today I'm going to show you how to get your rocks density measured by getting its specific gravity. There's a few methods, but this method seems to be pretty easy and it doesn't cost very much, so I'll explain what I do to get the specific gravity of my rocks or anything that I find, mineral, whatever. First off, you're going to need a scale and the scale that I use is a $20 scale that I got off of Amazon. It's got a 2,000 gram capacity, but it also goes down to milligrams as well, so you can get the precise measurement that you need doing your calculation with the milligrams. So if you're going to do some bigger rocks, you're going to need a bigger scale. And hopefully the bigger scale, if you spend a lot of money, it'll go into milligrams as well. So milligrams is really handy to have when you want to do a specific gravity and get pretty specific to its actual number so that you can match it up on the chart for what you're looking at. So anyways, so you need a scale. Second thing you're going to need a beaker of water. I'm using a beaker. It doesn't have to be a beaker. It could be glass. It depends on the size of the rock that you're testing. So, like for instance this, if I use the glass, it might actually hit the sides of the glass, so I'm not going to use this on a glass. So I'll use a beaker. But the weight can't be anything that the scale can't handle. So 2,000 grams, you got to make sure that this is not 2,000 grams or else it won't work. So. The third thing you're going to need is a piece of string. And uh, what I did is just I just did two loops. What I'm using is actual dental floss. Uh, it's very thin and it won't add to the displacement of the water when you when you submerge your target into the water. So anyways, I'm using dental floss. You can use rope, but the rope will, some ropes are kind of thick and it'll actually throw off your reading. So I, I would suggest using dental floss. It works pretty good. So what I do is just tie a loop and a loop and then I tie like a noose and then it tightens on itself. So, works really well. There we go. All right, so let's, uh, oh yeah, third thing you're gonna need is, sorry, your fourth thing you're going to need, you need a piece of paper and a pen so you can write down your calculations, right? So you can write them down on a sheet of paper and then do your calculations. The, uh, then you're gonna need a calculator. So that's the fifth thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need a calculator. So there you go. So let's see, I'm gonna choose to uh, weigh this rock that I found. I'm not, not saying that this is a meteorite because it, I mean, it's got the it's got the telltale signs of slag. But let's let's measure this and see what we get, anyways, and we'll see what we get. Okay, so this I'm getting 125. Point, point nine, 125.9 grams on this one. So what you do next is you take your loop, put it on your rock, make sure you put it in a place where it's not going to fall out, so test it first. And that seems to be pretty good. So then after that you take your beaker of water, place it on your scale, of course it's going to show you what it weighs. This one weighs 1,900 grams, so it's almost at the limit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit the tear on the scale. There's a button that you can, there's a button on most of these scales that say tear. So I hit the tear button, brings it down to a zero. So now what it's going to do, it's going to read any displacement of this water. It's actually going to give me a reading in grams. So let's try it out and see what we got. All right. So what you want to do is you want to suspend it from a string. Try not to have it like rolling around too much and then you can disperse it into the water very slowly just until the point where it submerges. Alright, I'm going to steady my hand here because this rock is pretty heavy. I'm getting a reading of 35.1. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull it out of the water and I'm going, to so, I'm going to do it three times to get a reading. So pull it out, put it back in. Now you see the different reading right from there. Now I'm getting 34.9. So 34.9. 34.9. It moves around just a touch, but you take you take the closest reading to where it's not actually moving in the water. So I'm moving around a little bit. 34.9. I'm going to try one more time. Now I'll put it in again very slowly. 
just submerge it and I get 34.9 so let's go with 34.9 so also you're gonna to want to have some paper towels beside you to uh, dry off the rocks when you pull them out so that's what I have here so 34.9 all right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a calculation on this one. So 125.9 divided by 34.9, and I get a reading of 3.60. 3.60. There you go, 3.60. Now the chart that I'm going to put up here is a chart that gives you rocks. Here's the whole scale of all the rocks and minerals and steel. And then the uh, other one that I'm going to show you is the to my left will be the uh, meteorite scale. You see this one falls in the meteorites, but it's, it just doesn't have all the features. I mean, it's got little tiny holes, which they call ves vesicles, but they're not in, it's not in the inside matrix. The inside matrix is very dark. There's no holes on the inside. But there's definitely holes, like some holes on the outer, on the outer edge. Looks like what... But again, this, this rock... I haven't been able to find a match for this as far as terrestrial yet. I mean, it's... it's, it's the, the density alone is 360. It's pretty heavy. It's very magnetic. Okay, magnetic. All over the place. But it doesn't match any patterns as far as any photos that I've seen of any meteorites that they, they kind of look like this, but this more has implications of slag, but slag doesn't follow, does not follow. If you looked at the charts here, iron slag does not fall within this 360. It's a lot low, it's a lot lower. I have pieces of slag here that I've tested that are slag and they go down into the 200s or the three, below 300s. This one, for instance, is the 360. This one's a mystery. I'm bringing this one to the museum so they can uh, have an expert take a look at it and see what they think what this one is. But anyway, this one's a mystery. I'm not saying it's a meteorite because it doesn't match any of the char characteristics of any of the photos that I've seen. But anyways, that's one. Hopefully this helped. And with your basic scale, water, string, calculator, piece of paper, you can very quickly determine what your specific gravity is. So.